Hello, my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and it's Friday Fun Day. Now, today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet a super pretty wildflower washcloth. This is the pink one, still on the blocking board. This is one I did in lots of variegated colors. It's one yarn with lots of colors in it. Then I also have this one that I did. And basically, you can use this, of course, as a washcloth. You can also use it as a doily and maybe set a candle on it for decorating, maybe a basket of crossed buns, <laughs> or just some flowers in a vase or something. But it also makes, of course, a lovely washcloth. It's a great pattern for spring, and it's also great for using up leftover cotton yarns you have in your yarn stash. Now it measures about 10 by 10, so it's a nice size for both a washcloth and a doily. All right, now remember, as always, I'll put that blog link with the notes and the information about the pattern and pictures on my blog, and you'll find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make some of our wildflower washcloths, that can also be doilies, we're going to be using cotton yarn. This is a medium weight number four cotton yarn. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of cotton in here. This one is peaches and cream yellow with I love this cotton in this sparkle pink. I don't know if you can see the sparkles in that. And then I have some I love this cotton just in the blue. This one is, I think, Crafter's Secret. This is I love this cotton. No, this is peaches and cream, only a little bit darker. And then this is the yellow from this peaches and cream. Now, this one is sugar and cream that I had in white, cotton of course, and then this is an I love this cotton yarn that I had on hand. I don't have the names of all of these because they're all ones that are in my scraps. Now the yellow <coughs> is just called sunshine. And for today's demonstration, I'm going to be making one um, with a brown center, yellow petals, and I'm going to trim it with this green. I want it to kind of look like a sunflower or maybe some of those black-eyed Susans that we see out there in the fields. There are a lot here in Oklahoma, and I love them. And so what you need is about maybe an ounce of your center color, about an ounce and a half of your color two, and then maybe a half ounce of your blue. We're going to be stitching up our wild flowers with an H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You need a needle for weaving in ends and a pair of scissors. Now at the beginning of the video, I showed you where I had blocked my um, washcloths. And I do that with a blocking board and I'm gonna show you at the end of the video how I block my washcloth and doily. One thing to keep in mind also is once you wash your washcloth, if you want to reblock it, you can. If I'm using this as a washcloth, I usually don't block it. If I'm going to use it as a doily, then I'll probably block it because I want it to hold the shape of the wild flower. We're going to be okay. starting in the center of our flower and working our way out. So I'm using this beige for the center of my flower. All right, I made my slip knot. I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to join this chain into a circle. So I'll put the tail of yarn over my hook and pull it through the loop. Snug that down and make my stay knot. Max just sneezed. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we're going to put our hook in, pull up a loop, and chain three. Now if you would choose to use a different way of doing your beginning circle, that's totally fine. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, and now we need to stitch 11 more, so we have a total of 12. So there's one, there we go two, three, 
four, five, six, and you'll notice I am stitching over this tail of yarn, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, plus our chain three is twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Chain three plus eleven is twelve. Now we're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. And now before we do round two, we're going to turn this over and pull on that string and go ahead and weave this middle one in. You can wait till the end of the washcloth and come back and weave it in when we weave the other ones in. I just like to go ahead and do the center. It's a preference, of course, you can wait. But do remember that this is probably going to go through the wash a few times, so make sure you go back and forth so we don't have that tail come undone. All right, that looks nice and secure. Clip that off. And for round one, we have 12 double crochets joined to the chain three and chain three. For round two, our chain three counts is our first double crochet. So we're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. Now we're going to place two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. So for round one we had 12 and round two we'll have 24 double crochets. Two double crochets in each of the double crochets working all the way around. And then we'll join back over here to our chain three. We have two double crochets in each of our double crochets around so we have 24 double crochets. We're going to join to the chain three and chain one. Now for round three, we're going to stitch a single crochet in the first three stitches. One, two, three. And then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch two single crochets, one and two. Then we'll stitch one single crochet in the next three one, two, three, and then two single crochets in the next. One, two. One single crochet in the next three, and two single crochets in the next. And we'll repeat this working the rest of the way around and join back to our first single crochet. So I repeated that one single crochet in the next three, two in the next, all the way around, and we're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch. And we're going to cut our yarn. Because we're done with the center color. Unless you're going to keep your colors the same, then you can carry on. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna bring in our petals color, and I'm using this yellow. And now we're going to, I grabbed the wrong end, there we go, chain three, one, two, and three. So the chain three counts as our first double crochet, and we're going to double crochet in the next four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. Whoops, get back in there. <laughs> there we go. All righty, now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one. So we have one, two, three, four, five double crochets. Chain one, and now we'll go right to that next stitch and stitch a double crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, 
and five. We'll chain one again and then go in the next stitch and stitch one double crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. And again, chain one. Now remember, we are not skipping a stitch where we've done our chain ones. All right, and then we'll repeat this three more times and then join back to our chain three. Chain one, one double crochet in the next five. Do not skip a stitch in those chain ones. So I repeated that three more times, five double crochets, chain one, and now I'm going to join to my chain three. Looks like I need to snug that down a little bit. It's kind of popping up there. There we go. All right, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six sets of five double crochets, chain one. That's how row four should look. All right, let's do round five. <clears throat> We join to our chain three and chain three. Now this chain three counts as one double crochet and we're going to stitch a double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three. And that will make us increase by one right there. Now we're going to stitch a double crochet in the next three. Get in there. There we go. One, two, and three. And then in this last double crochet of these chain five, or these five double crochets, we're going to stitch two double crochets in that last double crochet. One and two. And then chain one. So where we had five, one, two, three, four, five, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets, chain one. We're going to skip the chain one space, <clears throat> go in the next double crochet and stitch two double crochets. One and two. Then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. There we go. All righty, and then we'll stitch two double crochets in that last double crochet of those five and chain one. Then we'll go to the next set of five double crochets, two double crochets in the first one, one double crochet in the next three. This doesn't want to stay on my hook today. One, two, and three. <laughs> there we go and then two double crochets in that last of those five and chain one. And so on each of our five double crochets, we're increasing to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and still chain one, skip the chain one space, and then we'll repeat that on these last three sets and join back to our chain three. I completed row five. We have six sets of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets with chain ones. I joined to my chain three and chained three. So now for row six, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to increase at the beginning and end of each of our sets. One, two, three, four, five, and then two in the last of that set. And so now we increased from seven to nine double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Chain one. <clears throat> now we'll go to our next double crochet and stitch two double crochets. 
one double crochet in the next five. One, two, three, <clears throat> four, five, and then two double crochets in our last double crochet of that set. And chain one. And so we had five, then we had seven, and now we have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Chain one and repeat all the way around on our flower. I have completed round six. We have six sets of nine double crochets with chain ones in between. I joined to my chain three and chain three. And now we're going to do this for one more row. So we'll double crochet in the same chain, or the same stitch, I mean, as our chain three. <clears throat> and then one double crochet in each of those stitches across. Till we reach that last double crochet of this group or set, and then we'll stitch two double crochets in that last double crochet of that set and chain one. So now we've gone from five to seven to nine to eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven double crochets, chain one. So then we'll go to the next double crochet, just like we did on the previous rows, and stitch two double crochets. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six and seven, and then two double crochets in the last double crochet of that set, which again, we have two, we have seven and two, so that's 11. Chain one and repeat. And again, we'll just repeat this working all the way around our washcloth. And again, join back to our first chain three. I completed row seven. It's super pretty and it looks like a hexagon, right? It has six sides. Each of the sets have 11 with our chain one in between. <clears throat> but now we want to form the shapes of the petals. All right, so when we join to our first chain three, we're only going to chain one. <clears throat> now we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches. So one single crochet and then a second single crochet. Now we're going to go to the next two stitches and stitch a half double crochet in those. All right, so now <clears throat> in these next three double crochets, we're going to stitch two double crochets in each. One and two. Then we'll go to the next one and we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and two. Then we'll go to the next one and stitch two double crochets. One and two. And that leaves us with four double crochets left. So we'll stitch a half double crochet in the next two. One, two, and a single crochet in the next two. One and two. And then we'll chain one. <clears throat> and that's going to cause the end of our petal to start to flare out. All right, so we'll go to our next set of 11. Single crochet in the first two. One, two. Half double crochet in the next two. Two double crochets in the next three. So one, two, 
one, two, and one and two. And again, that leaves us with four double crochets. So we'll have double crochet in the next two, one, two, and single crochet in the next two, one and two, and chain one. And see how that flares out to form the edge of that petal? <clears throat> Let's do another one. One single crochet in the next two, one, two. Half double crochet in the next two. Two double crochets in the next three. So one, oops, get in there. <laughs> two, one and two and one and two. One half double crochet in the next two. And one single crochet in the last two of that set. And chain one. All right, and then we'll just repeat this on these last three sets and join back to our first single crochet. I have completed row eight. <clears throat> we have, of course, six sets of two singles, two halves. Then we have six double crochets, two in each of the next three, two halves and two singles, chain one, and repeat all the way around. And you can see how it makes those points come out on our petals. We chained our last chain one, join to our first single crochet, and chained one. All right, so on row nine, we're going to be stitching in all single crochets. <clears throat> so we're going to single crochet in the first five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to place two single crochets in the next four. One, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. And that leaves us with one, two, three, four, five stitches, and we'll stitch one single crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. That brings us to the chain one space. <clears throat> We're going to stitch one single crochet in that chain one space. And that just makes that petal lay nice and flat and have a nice single crochet edge on there. All right, so let's go to the next petal. One single crochet in the first five. One, two, three, four, five. Now in those next four, we're going to stitch two single crochets in each. So there's one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Leaves us with five stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and then that chain one space, we're going to stitch a single crochet in the chain one space. All right, and that's the way that row nine is worked. And you can see how it just really helps make those petals 
do what they're supposed to do and stand out and help hold the shape. All right. So we do five single crochets, then two in each of the next four, five single crochets, and then a single crochet in the chain one space. And we'll repeat this working all the way around our flower washcloth. I have completed row nine, five single crochets, two single crochets in the next four, five single crochets, then a single crochet in the chain one space. And that just pulls it all together and makes it ready for our next row, which is our trim. We join to our first single crochet and chain one. Oops. <laughs> My bins are magnetic. Alrighty. We're going to cut our yarn and bring in this pretty green. Now, <clears throat> you don't have to do this trim in a different color if you don't want to. I just like it because I think it just adds another dimension to it. And with putting the green on the edge of this flower, <clears throat> it just kind of reminds me that there's leaves, even though it won't have a leaf. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to bring in our last trim color, and this would look pretty with orange or pink or any color, really. And whatever colors you have in your yarn stash will work just fine. I like to mix and match, as you know. Alright, so we're going to go right in that first single crochet and stitch a single crochet. Go ahead and snug that down a little bit better. Then we're going to chain one skip the next and single crochet in the next. It's just a really simple trim. Single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. And I wanted to use a flat trim, not one that has a bumpy edge like say a reverse single crochet because I want it to lay flat. I don't want I don't want there to be an edge on it because it is a doily as well as a washcloth. All right, so single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Now, of course, if you want something a little bit more lacy, you can always do that. Add little shells or just you know, ruffles around the edge. It's your washcloth and your doily, and you can change the edge of the trim however that you want to on yours. I personally just wanted just a simple little trim. Nothing spectacular, <laughs> but still for it to have a nice cute finish. All right, so single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one, all the way around <clears throat> the edge of our flower. I think it just gives it just a little added touch. Like I said, a little makes it a little more three-dimensional without having to add height. All right, so we'll continue this on around and join back to our first single crochet. So I completed that edge and I really like it on this yellow and brown. It really to me does say sunflower or black eyed Susan, which is a very popular flower down here, which is a wildflower. All right, so I joined to my first single crochet. I'm going to go in the back and pull that loop to the back and tie off to the back. So my wildflower washcloth or doily is all completed, but maybe it's not as crisp as you would like. And so what you can do is block it. And I have these blocking boards. I got them at Michael's years ago. <clears throat> but if you don't have a blocking board, there are lots of other things that you can use. You just need something spongy. If you don't have something like this, you can always use a piece of cardboard with a towel laid over it, okay? And so what I do is I take it and I put it on the blocking board and I just pin it in place. You don't need a lot of pins. Just make sure that you're using a stainless steel pin that's not going to rust. Sometimes some of the old dressmaker pins will rust. I had a set of them given to me and I didn't know that they would rust and they did. <laughs> So here it is. So <clears throat> I put it on my blocking board 
And then I just take water and I spritz it. Now I'm not going to do that right now because I'm in my yarn room and I don't want to get water everywhere. But I do not soak this down. I don't get it super wet. I just pin it to the shape that I want. For instance, if you want the centers of these to come in a little more, you can push those in with your pins so that it has a little bit more of a flower look. Especially if you're going to use this as a um, doily because once you wash it, of course you'll have to repin. You'll have to re-block. But if you want it to have just a little bit more of a flower look, you can bring those edges in. <clears throat> I need to grab one more pin out of this container. I have them on a magnet thing and it wants to hold on to them. And you can see how that makes it look a little bit more like a flower. All right, so then you take your water bottle and just spritz it till it's damp. And I always kind of push it flat, like I push this forward, I just push it flat. This is up a little bit, I'll spritz that, push that flat. And then I go and set this on top of my dryer. You don't have to. Um, if you're in a drier climate, you, it'll dry quicker. But I, I have always just gone in and set it on top of my dryer. And then when I, it dries in there, it's out of the way. And then when I run a load of laundry and the dryer runs, the heat of it will come up through and help dry it as well. All right, it's a really simple process. I don't put anything in the water, only water. Spritz it and let it dry. So basically pin it, spritz it, and let it dry. <laughs> so this was another really fun Friday fun day. <clears throat> Here is the flower that we made. You can see it's a nice big 10 by 10 inch washcloth or doily. And I think this will look really pretty. It's just a, a glass container with a green candle. That'll look really pretty on there. And I have a bathroom that is sunflowers. So I'm going to put this in my sunflower bathroom. I think it's going to be really pretty. They're super easy to make. And you can use up a lot of the leftover yarns in your cotton yarn stash. And remember, these make great gifts too. Well, I hope you enjoyed our wildflower washcloth and doily pattern today. And I'll see you next week for another Friday Fun Day with Sarah.